So calculate the length of HJ, so this unknown one, which we can just call X. So always give the lengths a name. Give your answer correct to three significant figures. Okay, guys, so first things first here. When you see a right angle triangle, always think two things. One, Pythagoras' theorem, or two, Sokotoa. Well, you only use Sokotoa if there's angles involved. So in this case, we're going to use Pythagoras' theorem. Now, what's Pythagoras' theorem again? Well, he states that A squared plus B squared must equal C squared. In other words, the side of squares of two lengths must equal the hypotenuse squared. In this case, the only hypotenuse is 16.2. So that's going to be our C. This means that A and B could be anything. So A could be this one and B could be the other side. Now, putting this into the formula, well, A squared plus B squared, this is essentially 11.8 squared plus X squared must equal 16.2 squared. And this is straightforward now. All you got to do is just rearrange make X subject here. Now, what I will do is subtract 11.8 squared across. So we're going to have X squared equals 16.2 squared minus 11.8 squared. Put this all in the calculator exactly as you see it. And then square root your answer. And when you do that, guys, you should get a result two, three significant figures of 11.1 centimeters. And that's it, guys. That's this one done. Um, number eight. All right. So solve the inequality. All right. Not too bad. With solve literally any single type of equation on inequality, you always got to make X a subject. And well, the only way to remove this is to subtract 4 on both sides, okay? That's how you get a plus 4. And doing so, well, you'll be left with x in the middle. Now, subtracting 4 across, 9 take away 4 is 5, minus 3 take away 4 is minus 7. And that's it, guys. Literally two marks for that bit. For b, on the number line, represent this inequality. Alright, so let's forget about the signs for a second, yeah? This means y is between minus 2 and 5, yeah? So what I would do... Just draw a circle of minus 2, draw a circle of 5, and connect them yeah, with a straight line. So you can use a ruler for this or something. And now, what you got to notice here is that one has a little equal sign attached to it. So this is less than equal. The other one is just a less than. The one with the equal sign means you include 5. So this means you've got to shade in the 5. If you don't include it, then you do not shade in. So that's it. That's literally um, 4 marks for this. Now, number 9. Write 82 million in standard form. Now, the easiest way to do stuff in standard form is to just always put an arrow on the very first digit, which is the 8, and then and write a point and copy out every non-zero digit. So the only other non-zero digit is a 2, so it'd be 8.2. And then we write times 10 to the power something. Well, how to figure that power out? You just count how many digits are after the 8. Well, you've got three zeros, another three zeros, and a 2. That's seven digits, so it'd be 10 to the power of seven and again that's done for b write 2.9 times 10 to the power minus 5 as an ordinary number well an ordinary number is literally these kind these kind of types just your everyday numbers now if you've got a negative power this just tells you how many zeros are before the first digit two well you got five so this means five zeros so what i'll do i'd write five zeros like this and then put a two nine and I always put decimal place over here. You always put decimal place just between the first two, right after. So this reads as 0 0.00029. And again, always put your answer there, yeah? All right, so next bit. So according to this information, Jupiter has a mass of 1.898 times 10 to the power 27 kg. So that's a lot, by the way. That's heavy. Mercury has a mass of this amount, which is actually less. So don't look at the, the figures in front, look at the 10 to the power ones, yeah? This is 10 to the power 27, this is 10 to the power 23. This essentially has four more digits after that one, so this is way bigger. Now, the mass of Jupiter is K times the mass of Mercury. So in English, you can say, uh, let's say the mass of Jupiter is J, that equals K times the mass of Mercury, so K times M. C, work out the value of K. Well, just make K a subject, so divide M across. You're going to have J over M, which must equal K. So the mass of J over the mass of Mercury. Give your answer to two sig figs. Well, we literally just said what we have to do. So just put in. So in your calculator, guys, I want you to write this. The mass of Jupiter, which is 1.898 times 10 to the power 27. All at once here on the top half and on the bottom half of the fraction. 3.285 times 10 to the power 
23. And when you do this, you should get an answer. Well, to two significant figures. Actually, wait, in your calculator, you'll probably get something like 5777.777 and so on. Because they want two significant figures, all you go do is highlight the first two numbers and look at the decider, which is this value here. Since seven is, is bigger than five, this means you round this number by one. So then it becomes 5,800 or 5,800 uh, times bigger. All right, number 10. So here the table shows information about the weight of 60 apples. Okay, so for every single kind of uh, tabular looking question, when you've got tables and stuff, um, the frequency means how many. So for example, we know we've got 60 apples, so all of these frequencies should tow up to 60. And for each information, for example, they say, 12 of the apples must weigh between 160 and 164 grams. Whereas let's say just three apples weigh between 180 and 184 grams. So yeah, so this is just classifying data. Okay, so looking at part A, they want us to write down the modal class. And well, the modal class is just another word for saying the mode guys, yeah? So just find the mode. Now, if you're not sure what the mode is, the mode is just the most common. And to find the most common in frequency tables, just look at the one of the highest frequency guys so this is the mode yeah that means the mode with the highest frequency is the clock was that weight so you can write this answer 164 to 168 grams because most of the apples weigh somewhere between there now part b work on estimate for the total weight of 60 apples all right so this is kind of like finding the mean now for these kind of problems because you've got like a, a like a, an interval sort of um, frequency problem you go always find the midpoint here so what I would do guys, and let me just delete this carefully. Um, I would always add another table called the midpoint. And we're going to call this one midpoint X, yeah, just to give it a name. And this is frequency F. And all you got to do is firstly, well, find the midpoint over here. And to calculate the midpoint, if you're not sure, if you can't see that between 160 and 164 is 162, you could instead just add these two numbers. So 160 plus 164, add them up. And halfway, and halfway between, you get this value. So do the same thing for for the rest, guys. Yeah, find the midpoint for the rest of them. So the next one would be one six six. Next would be one seventy, one seventy four, one seventy eight, and one eighty two. And now to work out the total weight, this just means you need to now multiply each of these values. Yeah. So twelve times one hundred sixty two, twenty times that, and keep going. And for each case, you want to add these. Yeah. So work them out and then sum them up. And when you do that, when you find the multiplication of everything and you add the total results, you should get um, a total weight of 10,120 grams. So that's how many old apples weigh, yeah? Because you got, for example, you got 12 of them. On average, they're 162 grams each. Just multiply them and then sum them up. Now, is it in grams? Yeah, it's in grams. So careful, guys. Sometimes they might just try and play games with you and write kg or something. So always check out what unit you're working with. Now, next bit. <clears throat> so using the table above, complete the cumulative frequency table. All right, cumulative frequency just means add and go. So notice how the weight class slightly changed, yeah? For example, over here you had uh, like 12 apples that weigh between 160 and 164. So you should write that there, which is the same. However, the next group like now is between 160 and 168. And this was 164 to 168. So what they did, they kind of included, they kind of opened the range a bit. So this means they're including as you go. So it'd be 12 plus 20. So now you have 32 apples in that way. And well, to make it easy for you guys, just add and go. So all you gotta do is add and go. So you got 32 now, add another 14. 32 plus 14 is 46. Um, add seven, which will give us 53. So this is kind of a bit, yep. And then add four and add three. This will give us 57 and then finally 60. So this means by the end, you should have all 60 apples between the smallest weight and the biggest weight. Okay. All right, now scrolling down the part D guys, it says on the grid, draw a cumulative frequency graph for your table. In other words, we gotta be plotting this now. So the way to plot this comfortably, let's have a look at the graph. You got weights across the x axis and you got cumulative frequency across the y's. So, this means your x axis, which will include the endpoints. Yeah, so always do the endpoints. What I do, I always circle them like this. Yeah, and this is going to match up with the y values of 12. 
So this could be your x axis and this would be your y. And yeah, just have to plot everything here. Yeah? So let's do the first one. So you got 164 and 12. So this means 164. Oh god. So let's see. So well, it's five across here, and it's ten blocks. So every block is a half. So every two blocks is one, yeah? So that's 61, 62, 63, 164. And this is going all the way up to 12. So we've got to kind of repeat this for... Whew, so this is kind of long. Let's repeat this for all, yeah? So 168 and 32. 168, 6, 7, 8. So 168 is here, guys. And that goes up to what again? Uh, 32. So 168 stretch up to 32. Anyway, I'm going to quickly do this here. So we're going to repeat this for the rest. And now to make this complete, always draw a nice curve here. So I'm going to zoom out a bit. Um, curve should be, oh, this is going to be hard. It's going to be, it has to be like a snaky curve here. So this is a bit hard. Yeah, something like that. All right, a nice little snaky curve. Yeah, so this that's so that's it. That, that's just um, part D done. Now looking at E, yeah? so work on estimate for the interquartile range. So the IQR. Okay, so interquartile range means the difference between the upper quartile and the lower quartile. Now to work out the upper and lower quartiles of these kind of problems. What I would do is just firstly ask myself, all right, so how many apples we all have all together? Well, we've got 60 apples. Now, low quarter means find the first quarter. Well, that essentially means one quarter of 60. Well, one quarter, one quarter of 60 is just 15. So this means that the low quarter is actually over here, corresponding to, um, yeah, 165. So this is the low quarter. And the upper quarter is three quarters of 60. And 3 quarters of 60 is just 3 times bigger than 1 quarter, which is now 45. So we draw a dot line over here, corresponding to the upper quartile, and it hits there, and you just keep going all the way down. I think that's going to smack around here, what, about 171. So by the way, guys, because I'm doing a computer, it might be a bit inaccurate. I'm not completely sure, but always double check the mark scheme. But more or less, this is the kind of graph you're looking at here. So yeah, so this is the upper quartile. So we write here, and that was about 171, yeah? And this was 165. And well, the interquartile range is a difference. So subtract these two values and you should get, well, six grams. And that's it, that's the end of this question. All right, number 11, solve the simultaneous equations. Okay, in this case, both of these equations are linear, meaning there's no x squared or y squared terms here. Now to solve these nice and easy, my personal trick is to always multiply the top and bottom by whatever the values are in front of the x. For example, on the top half, we want to multiply the first equation by 4, and on the bottom, we want to multiply this by 7. And the reason why we do this is because we want to make it both 28x, and then when we subtract the equations, the x will go. So let's have a look here. If you do the first one times it all by 4, you're going to get 28x minus 8y equals ooh, 4 times 21. 164 okay for the bottom half multiply by 7 again you're going to get 28x which is objective plus 3 times 7 is 21y equals 77 now here we just want to subtract these two yeah and doing that will get rid of the 28x so subtracting these two well that becomes nothing minus 8 take away 21 gives us minus 29y yeah so be very careful with the subtraction and then 164 take away 77 should give us 87 and then to find y well all you need to do is just divide 87 by uh, minus 29 and when you do that you should get a y result of negative 3 okay that's not bad now if you get one of the values you can easily find the other value and what i would personally do i would look at all the possible equations i have and just pick the easiest one yeah now, for me, the easiest one is probably, uh, and this is just me, yeah, the second one. Now, if I just replace this y value of minus 3, what happens here, yeah? We now have 4x, which is the same one, plus, okay, 3 times minus 3. That's actually minus 9, so it'd be minus 9, and then equals, well, 11. This is easy to solve now. This is just a straight-up linear solving equation. 
Now what I will do is move minus 9 across, and if I move it, I'll have to add 9 across. This will leave us with 4x equals 20. And to separate 4 from the x, well, you just got to divide it. So dividing 4 across, x will equal 5. And that's it, guys. That's your two solutions. And when you get both, always remember to put it here. Yeah? So x is 5 and y is minus 3. I just want to thank you guys for coming to this end of my channel and if you've enjoyed the content so far just go onto my channel page hit the subscribe button and hit the bell for more notifications and if you want you can do personalize or all and that way you won't miss any future maths or educational videos anyway guys thank you for watching and see you next time ciao